Hey there, it's Book Riot contributing editor Sharifa, and today I'm talking about awkward library experiences. And specifically, I'm talking about awkward library experiences from the perspective of a patron. So I've been going to the library a lot more these days, even compared to a few years ago for work and for pleasure because I read more books these days and I can't afford to buy all of the books I want to read. And I don't know if it's because I'm more observational or because I have a lower tolerance for things as an adult, but these are almost moments that could be categorized as pet peeves that I've noticed happen in and around the library and make the situation a little bit less pleasant. So in no particular order, let's start with groups of people who park themselves in the aisles and between stacks instead of sitting at the tables. And it always seems that these groups are parked in the exact spot I need to access. I don't know what it is, but it happens almost every time I go to the library. And I don't know if maybe it's because I go to a larger library and it's in the middle of the city and there are just a lot of people and there's not enough space, but every time I try to access something, there is always a few people just sitting there and you sort of either have to walk over them because Often they will pretend not to see you or they don't care if you're there or maybe they're just so absorbed in their book, which I completely understand and can relate to, that they don't know that maybe they should like scoot a little or look up to see if there are other people who need to use the aisles, perhaps. And the way that I generally react is equally awkward because I will kind of skirt around the aisle rather than saying, excuse me, can you get out of my way? I'll, you know, linger around the area pretending to look at books in other aisles as my eyes dart back and forth to the people hoping that they just miraculously and randomly move or I just slowly encroach on their area until they get that tingly sensation on the backs of their necks that tells them Maybe they're being stalked. Maybe there's a creeper around. And then more often than not, they'll make eye contact. They'll skedaddle, chased by the sound of my apologies because at that moment, inexplicably, I feel like I'm the one causing the disturbance. Here's another awkward moment experienced in the aisles that made me question what one should do in this situation. So this is based on a specific experience I had in the library where I was in the children's section looking for some picture books and I go around the corner of these low shelves and sure enough, where I need to be, there is a group sitting in the aisle and the group is a mother, a father, and their toddler. The parents' heads jerk up to me, their eyes huge, and that's when I realize that the toddler on the mom's lap is not just looking at a picture book, the toddler is tearing the pages out of a library book. And the parents, before they got the shock of seeing me, were just kind of having a conversation like, who cares? I was still dumbfounded looking from them to the librarian and back to them as they quickly reshelved their book and ran off with their toddler. Who does that? And then there's the awkwardness of people who love to frequent the library but don't know how to use their inside voices. You will find many vocalists in the library. There are those who headphones in will sing at the top of their lungs while looking for books. There's the group of friends who go to the library to have their wild and raucous conversations. And then there are the strangers who decide to pull you into a random conversation where they are the loud ones, but now by association, you are loud and receiving the evil eye. I had a situation where some guy came up to me and wanted to talk about my tattoo and tattoo artistry and that sort of thing. And we're standing in front of the librarian and I'm always conscious of the librarian's presence, you know? And He's screaming at the top of his lungs. Everybody's head turns in our direction. And I'm like, because also the library isn't a place where I want to have a conversation. It's my sanctuary where I like to be alone with my thoughts and sort of pretend that everyone else in the library has disappeared and I am the only one among stacks and stacks of books. And then in theme with people who are very vocal in the library, there are those people who can't really help their vocalizations I'm talking about the people who go to the library sick, so I'm also talking about lots of nose blowing and chronic hacking cough. So you take an empty seat at a table and somebody sits across from you 
And as you're looking through your books, this person starts hacking and hacking and hacking up a lung. So now instead of reading your book, you're weighing your options. How awkward would it be to get up from this seat right now and move to another one? Should you ask this person if they need a drink of water? Would they like a cough drop? Because you're never going to read otherwise. You are only going to be able to hear this cough and think of all the cartoon germs flying at you from across the table. The library is a public space. You go in knowing it and you're bound to encounter an awkward moment because of it. So remember to bring cough drops.